Joes, welcome to another Toys Gone Wild. This one is dedicated to longtime Patreon tribe member ZZ Funk, who mentioned a while back that one of his favorite Joes was Corporal Brent Scott, better known to G.I. Joe fans as Hit and Run. So we'll be looking at the camoed ones green sheet today. Hit and Run was one of the few Joes who can use the Royal Wii and get away with it, as he's one of the only Joes, along with Rock and Roll, whose code name is two different words joined by a conjunction. We're out of gas! See? For longtime Joe fans who got out of the line after the Sunbow series ended in 86, 87 if you count the movie, Hit and Run is a perfect example of there being plenty of gas left in our tank. As long as they stuck to the original concept of military-inspired specialists. His figure was first released in 1988, and before the honchos settled on Hit and Run, the codenames Night Raid and Rope Burn were considered. I like that second one. It's certainly fitting considering one of his accessories, which was one of the coolest accessories of any 80s Joe. In addition to the regular release, there was a Target exclusive also available in 1988 that included a parachute which had a camo design on it as well, because everything about this guy was camo. Even the things you can't see. His primary military specialty may have been listed as infantry, but the design of the figure, as well as one of the key accessories, seems to focus more on his secondary military specialty, mountaineering. Kind of a spiritual successor to old Albert Pine. Although Hit and Run's yodeling can't hold a candle to Alpine. Oh, oh, yeah. Although Hit and Run was without a doubt a much worse clarinet player than Admiral Keelhaul. The figure was adorned in camo from head to toe. Even his skin is covered in camo paint. I've seen a lot of army guys wear war paint on their face, but Hit and Run was one of the first I ever saw that even covered his entire neck, wrists, and hands as well. And he was real thorough too. You couldn't see any of his natural flesh peeking past the camo. You'd think he was a Muppet with how thoroughly green he was. It's not easy being green. Especially for anyone who owned this figure and took him out to the lawn. Wonder how many got lost among the tall blades of grass, only to be discovered by the dreaded Cobra Brawn Mower. The figure also featured red goggles, which reminded me of Low Light. And any Joe with red goggles is a hard dude you don't want to mess around with in my books. Or I'll show you a real nightmare. The helmet wasn't removable, but you just know if it was. Camo hair under there and the front of the waist had a little loop that you could tie a rope to, so he could swing into action. His weapon harkened back to the glory days of early Joe, a black Colt 9mm 635 submachine gun with a long mag similar to the XM-15. Instead of a backpack, he came with a duffel bag, and luckily Hasbro used a rigid material for the strap instead of floppy rubber. So most of these are still intact to this day, despite being removed several times and often bearing the weight of the entire figure. The duffel bag contained a spool with string that fed out the front and attached to a grappling hook. And it could be retracted back into the bag by twisting this handle. The card art depicts a rope actually feeding through the loop on his harness. So if you were handy with undoing a 1 18th scale knot, you could feed it through the loop and then permanently attach the duffel bag to the figure. This is where the alternative codename of Rope Burn would have been fitting. Even this guy's duffel bag was deadly, because on the side was a place to store a knife used for hunting. Don't be a wise guy. What do you hunt with a knife? Mm. The camo, the big knife, the red goggles. This guy seemed like the Rambo of G.I. Joe. Nightmare. He didn't have any animated appearances other than a blink and you'll miss it spot in the commercial for the RPV where he's firing a missile. The GI Joe RPV. But there was plenty of hit and run in print, starting with the file card. Orphaned at the age of three by a drunken driver, hit and run grew up in a county institution from which he escaped with alarming regularity, climbing down sheer walls and running for miles across the plains in the middle of the night. 
When asked what he was running away from, he replied, I'm not running away from anything. I'm practicing. He went from the custody of the county directly into the army. And the quote reads, Infantry men don't march. They run. They run to get to the battle. They run during the battle. And they run to get away from the battle. The army doesn't call it running. They call the first one advancing. The second maneuvering. And the last disengaging. Hit and run calls it all running. And he's real good at it. Like I said, this guy is a hard soldier. Orphaned at the age of three by a drunk driver, and his codename is Hit and Run? Isn't it ironic? Well, that's one word for it. He also got a card from the Impel set, which references him raiding enemy encampments and disappearing into the darkness, and a thorough intelligence profile in Action Force Issue 15, which expands on the file card to include service in the Army's Parachute Regiment. And he made the cover of the Paint and Marker book, Ready to hunt down enemy with a radio. Man, they even changed the red goggles to pink. This is worse than what they did to Rambo in the Force of Freedom cartoon. His first appearance in the G.I. Joe comic was issue 80, where he's doing push-ups in the cargo plane? Always at the ready. It's interesting that another camo Joe is in the same plane, Ripcord. An omitted frame from this issue has Hit and Run going up to Ripcord, giving his half-hearted attempt at camo a once-over, and then asking Ripcord to hold his tea while Hit and Run bangs out another 500 push-ups. And his camo paint never runs. Only Hit and Run runs when he's done his push-ups. Later in the issue, during a firefight, he also reveals there's a mind behind the muscle as he tries to explain to Outback the concept of trigonomics. This natural-born warrior was actually quite the scientist on the battlefield. Other notable Marvel appearances are Special Missions 17, alongside another camo Joe, Stalker. And this time, he skips the face paint because Stalker holds no man's tea and has back-to-back -back appearances in Special Missions 22 and 23. He completely ditches the camo in issue 22 to become a Snow Joe, and then is back in full camo complete with face paint in 23 to battle the Iron Grenadiers. In this issue, Camo Joe's Stalker and Leatherneck both hold Hit and Run's beverages. He got the 25th anniversary treatment in 2009 as part of the Assault on Cobra Island box set. Then a convention exclusive, without face paint and camo, in 2013, as part of Night Force. Another 88-inspired figure in 2015, this time on single card, thanks to the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. A grey camo version, also in 2015, as part of the Vanishing Act 3-pack with Zartan and Torpedo. And finally, the Collectors Club Tiger Force version in 2018. Although it's nice you got Knight and Tiger Force versions in the modern line. For me, it's just not hit and run without the full green camo outfit and paint on his face and hands. It's like Flint without his beret, or Flint without his shotgun, or Flint without his shotgun shell suspenders, or Flint without his camo pants. You get the idea. There's just something about a physically honed warrior who also understands the science of battle. And you can't see him coming, or going. Rambo may have never been an official G.I. Joe, but the Joe team didn't need him, because they had hit and run. Cobra literally had no safe place to hide. Whether it was from the sides, above, or below, hit and run was another boogeyman that sent shivers down Cobra's scales. Thanks again to Jake for all your support over the years, as well as the entire Patreon tribe. A warm welcome to new members Ned Paul Faraci, Nate Higley, and Anthony DeLeon, and thank you Timothy Romans, Chris Miwa, and Road Warrior Max for the extra camo. Special thanks to Joepedia, the G.I. Joe Wikipedia, for all the intel, and to 3D Joes for the card art and file card scans. Leave a Joe thought in the comments spot, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe and run. Yo Joe!